Hello everyone, my name is Raffaele Della Corte. I am the Environment Plan Design Manager of the Engineering Department in Eratech. And uh, today I will talk to you about Hera's experience in setting up a green infrastructure. In particular, the facility I will talk to you about is a mechanical biological plant that produces biomethane. This plant is located in Sant'Agata Bolognese, near Bologna. Before going to the point, I want to tell you more about Eratec and uh, what is our expertise, because expertise is one of the crucial factors in the setup of green infrastructure. Eratec is the company that takes care of design and construction of plants and networks in all business areas of ERA, such as environment, water, gas, and energy in general. We also take care of laboratory analysis of potable water, wastewater, and all kinds of waste. We manage the remote control of ERAS network and plants, on, uh, offer a technical call center, uh, and uh, customer service for the new customers they want to connect to the network of ERA. In particular, the departments of engineering and laboratory offer the same services provided to ERA to third parties. These are some of the engineering department main projects. There are waste to energy plants, hazardous waste treatment plants, one in Italy and two in China, mechanical biological plants, and one of these is the plant that I will talk to you about in Sant'Agata Bolognese, wastewater treatment plants, cogeneration plants, and other plants that are not shown in this picture. Considering that the biomethane project of Sant'Agata Bolognese was the first of the kind developed by ERA and also the first in Italy managed by a multi-utility company, ERATEC and ERAMBIENTE, which is the company that uh, operates environment plans, decided to join forces. We put together our skills and set up a mixed project team where each one could bring their own expertise into the project. In particular, Heratech has experience in engineering, construction and startup, gas handling system and network design and construction, electrical systems, automation systems, and civil works, as well as architectural and structure. On the other hand, Herambiente has a huge experience in operation and supply chain management, maintenance management, anaerobic and digestion and composting, because they already have many plants of this kind, and in general, expertise in waste handling and waste management. The development of the idea started in 2014, where different work groups were created, also with the research and development structure and in Rete, which is the gas distribution company of ERA, and then, of course, ERATEC and ERA Ambiente. In uh, 2015, ERA ran a market research and developed a feasibility study. The authorization process took a year and a half and uh, it started in the summer of 2015 and lasted in uh, March 2017. Uh, meanwhile, we developed the design to purchase all the systems and we signed the contracts with the companies. Once acquired all the permits, we started the construction of the plant. This phase took about 18 months and we started the production of biomethane with the first injection of uh, biomethane into the grid between the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019. We completed the works with the architectural restyling of the plant in uh, the summer of 2020. Now I will show you a video where we can see the construction of the main components, which are the digesters and the upgrading systems, of which we will talk about later.
Okay, now let's go deeper in the process and uh, see how the plant works. First, we have a look at some figures. The plant treats uh, 100,000 tons per year of organic waste collection and also over 35,000 tons per year of green waste and pruning material. The outcome of this plant is 7.5 million of standard cubic meters of biomethane and over 20,000 tons per year of compost that is used in agriculture. 7.5 million standard cubic meters are equivalent to 6,000 tons of oil equivalent per year and so we avoid the release of 14,000 tons per year of CO2 in the atmosphere. The overall investment for this plant is about 37 million euros. So this is the plant layout. And one of the most difficult challenges was to build a new and innovative solution in an old existing facility with the limited spaces of installation. As we will see later in another video, we managed to make room to the new installations in the old facility. In this plant layout, you can see three differently colored sections. So one is the yellow one, is the waste storage and the mechanical pretreatment. Then there is a section for the anaerobic digestion and the gas production. And finally, uh, the anaerobic stabilization and compost production. Just a few words about the external skin of the plant. The idea at the basis of the concept is that valuable things such as compost and energy can grow from discarded material, just like grass grows from earth. The external skin is a metallic and dynamic plate, but transparent because the aim is not to hide, but to make technology be visible. So for the same reason, the digesters and the upgrading systems are not covered, but visible, visible at first sight. Let's now follow the process of the plant in a short video. We will explore the biomethane production plant in something that is like a virtual tour of the plant. This project is a great example of circular economy. Everything starts from the organic and everything goes back to an organic matter, which is the compost, and the production of renewable energy in form of biomethane. This is the site where we installed the plant. It's an existing landfill and a composting plant. Before building the new facilities, we had to make space for the installation of the new systems. So the first phase is a partial demolition of the old facility. First of all, we made space, demolishing an old building and a portion of the waste unloading building. We also eliminated all the underground leached storages. The second phase is the construction of the new plant. So in order to increase the capacity of existing composting plant, we had to build a new portion of waste unloading and the filter building in order to prevent the smell to go out of the plant. We built the anaerobic digestion system, the upgrading system, the new aerobic stabilization building, the air treatment system. All the leached storage tanks were over the ground and electrical panel rooms. In a closed area, we built the compressors and the biomethane quality monitoring system, as well as an electrical panel room. From here, 
we are connected to the grid. To complete the works, we set up an architectural restyling of the old facility. Now we can see how the plant works following the process phases. Trucks come from the domestic collection of the waste, the organic waste, and then they proceed along the road in order to discharge the waste on the floor in a dedicated building. There are dedicated areas to storage the waste. From here, a wheeled machine loads the waste and feeds two hoppers that are the start of two parallel lines of mechanical treatment. The first machine is a shredder. Then, through a belt conveyor, we feed the sieving drums that separate the organic from the plastic residues. From the plastic residues, it's still possible to recover through a machine, an organic separator, some traces of organic matter. The organic fraction is sent into two separate storage areas. From here, an orange peeled grub, moved by an overhead travelling crane, automatically charges a hopper, and through the hopper, and through a belt conveyor, we can feed four digesters. Inside of the digesters, the waste ferments and generates biogas. The biogas is sent to the upgrading system. Here, the biogas is cleaned from all the impurities, we will talk about these two systems later, in order to reach 98% of CH4. The biomethane is finally sent through the compressors into the national network. Before doing so, we have to analyze the quality. Injecting biomethane into the national network of natural gas let us fill trucks and car tanks. The digested material is mixed with green waste in order to give it more structure and the mixed material is finally sent to a wheeled machine into aerobic stabilization cells. After a period of about 25 days, the material is stabilized. So the wheel machine can load the final mechanical treatment where the material is sifted and the finest part is sent as compost to the market.
Now we have a brief focus on the digestion system and the upgrading system, which are the most technological and innovative systems installed in Sant'Agata Bolognese. The digesting system is made of four digesters. They are installed in parallel and basically made of the circular frame steels that are covered in a cylindrical plate and then there is a heat insulation all around them. The heat insulation has to keep the temperature inside between 50 and 55 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for the anaerobic digestion. The energy needed is obtained using the thermal energy produced by a cogenerator that is already installed by the existing landfill. This cogenerator uses the biogas released by the landfill and eventually this thermal heat is integrated with thermal energy that is taken from a natural gas boiler. The advantages of a continuous type compared to a batch type is that there is no manual handle of waste, but everything is managed by belts and screw conveyors, which are mechanical but automatically moved. This is a dry type of digester. And the pros of the dry solution compared to the wet solutions are many. First of all, compactness and modularity. The same amount of waste in a wet solution would take so much more space. Also, we have four digester instead of having one big digester. There is a relatively high dry matter percentage that can be used in the dry digester system compared to the wet one. In fact, in the wet systems, the dry matter has to be lower than 20, whether in this case we can have percentages that go from 20 to 40 percent. There is almost no water consumption and just in case of need, a bit of leachate of the same digested material can be used inside of the digester. There is a low energy consumption and a very easy maintenance. So the organic fraction is forced to pass through the reactors uh, by means of a screw conveyor. We can see here a section of one of the four horizontal uh, digesters. The mass takes about 20 days to proceed from the front end to the tail end of the reactor. During these days, the system is controlled in order to create and keep ideal conditions, which are a temperature between 50 and 55 degrees and uh, a pressure that is around 30, 40 millibars. So very, very low pressure. Uh, these uh, conditions are ideal for the anaerobic bacteria to grow and digest the mass releasing biogas that is made of methane in a percentage between 50 and 60 percent. There is also uh, carbon dioxide and the other minor compounds. At the discharge point of the reactor, a part of the digestate is recirculated as internal inoculation to increase the effectiveness of the reaction for the fresh mass that is coming into uh, the digester. Now we have a brief focus on the upgrading system. In Sant'Agata Bolognese, the upgrading system installed is a pressure water scrubber technology. The pressure water scrubber is one of the most widely diffused and uh, it's uh, characterized by a peculiar ease of usage and maintenance. It has very low consumption of chemical reagents, no heat energy consumption at all, moderately low energy, electrical energy consumptions, 
and it also can treat a very high flow rate of biogas compared to other technologies. It has a low CH4 loss, around 1%, and a very high efficiency in the H2S treatments, so that in many plants, the H2S pretreatment can be missed. This is not the case in Santagata because we installed a dedicated H2S treatment as well. The pressure water scrubbing process mainly consists in absorbing the CO2 from the biogas in order to create a stream of biomethane with a higher percentage of uh, CH4. The percentage to meet the law has to be higher than 98%. There are three columns, the absorption column, the flash tank, and the desorption column. In the first column, the absorption column, also called scrubber, the biogas is showered with water that dissolves the CO2, which has a higher solubility in water than CH4 at that pressure. It's a pressure between 6 bar and uh, 12 bar. The biomethane flows out from the top of the column and is sent to a final drying and filtration section with active carbon. The processed water, saturated with gas, is sent to a flash tank in the middle. In the flash tank, the last traces of CH4 are released in the expansion and recycled into the first scrubber. The remaining water is sent to the final column, the desorption column, which is a stripper, where the trapped CO2 is captured using a counter flow current of stripping air. The gaseous stream, generally called off gas, is filtered and released in the atmosphere. The process water is recirculated, so there is no water waste in the process, and the biomethane is sent to the compression and the analysis unit before being exported into the methane gas network. So biomethane has a great potential as fuel. In terms of emission, it's uh, comparable to electricity uh, if we consider the well-to-wheel cycle. In fact, um, a car that is uh, powered by a mix of uh, natural gas and uh, biomethane, let's say 20% biomethane, has a comparable emission of CO2 than um, an electrical car that is driven by a, a, a motor, an electric motor, uh, where the uh, electricity has been produced with the so-called EU mix of energy. Uh, so if we think to increase this percentage from 20% to 40%, these numbers of CO2 emissions can be the same. Uh, to make it more clear, if we have a 100% biomethane-driven car, the emissions are the same as a car that is driven by an electrical motor where the electricity is produced by wind energy. So there is a huge potential of biomethane and we can see some numbers that say it very clearly. In 2030, there is an estimated biomethane production of 10 billion normal cubic meters, of which eight will come from agriculture and two from selected organic waste. The energy content of biomethane in 2030 will grow up 100 terawatt hour. Only from landfills, 
there is a potential of 1.8 billion normal cubic meters in the next 30 years. So we can say that in the next years and up to 2050, the use of fossil hydrocarbons will lower and the use of renewable gas will go higher and higher. With this project, HERA meets 10 goals set by the UN Agenda at 2030 in nine areas of impact, promoting a smart use of energy, an efficient use of resources, and giving our contribution to innovation and development. So HERA Group has made circular economy real in Bologna. We chose to make the most of biomethane by making it available to the territory through partnerships with various local players, such as roadside distributors, taxi, bus operators, that are circulating now in the city of Bologna, as well as using it to supply part of our corporate fleet. Also, thanks to our gas distribution and sales companies, we are able to cover the entire supply chain from production, such as in the plant of Sant'Agata Bolognese, to the delivery of the biofuel produced directly to the citizen. Well, this is the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for listening.